Malawi is a country with a population expected to triple by 2040. Finding ways to feed more people in a country already struggling with malnutrition is a significant challenge. This country is largely uh, driven by agriculture. It employs over 70% of its population and contributes significantly, I believe over 30%, 30 to 40% of its GDP is based on agriculture. It's mainly smallholder based. We are in the business of empowering farmers, smallholder farmers, who for a long time have been at the bottom rung of society. And uh, to me at least, working for NASWAM is not just a job, it's a calling. Overall production in the country hovers mainly around 50% of the potential it should. The coming in of Feed the Future, they've really promoted the integration and the collaboration at grassroots level. This is where you're seeing Homer and Nasfam, they're working as a team. Before the project Feed the Future, we had the nutrition activities running by the government. So I think that's a challenge, getting you know, an organization that's very much agriculturally focused and another that's very much health and nutrition focused to work together and talk to one another. Farmers are diversifying, and I think that's exciting. I mean, that's one of the you know, main objectives of Feed the Future, right, is to really um, get farmers to diversify and to commercialize, and we are seeing that happening. Within our zone of influence, um, we saw in the 2013 and 14 agricultural season a 34% increase in soy production over the 2011 and 12 season, which we use as our baseline. So 34% is really significant and, and a lot of that is coming um, more from increased production as opposed to uh, increased yields. Improved seed production is part of Malawi's innovative strategy to increase resilience. Drought tolerant, disease resistant and rugged seed like the CG7 groundnut can help turn Malawi into a more food secure country. Averia is a lead farmer through the Feed the Future and NASFAM coalition. She relies on her two-hectare farm to provide enough income to feed and economically support her family. Our lead farmers so far are around 30% women and they really should be at least 50, if not 60, since the proportion of male to female beneficiary farmers is, is about 60, 40. It shouldn't just be us saying we want to do integration on the ground, but trying to get local organizations to see the value in integration and to be able to learn from one another so that hopefully these activities can be sustained after you know our funding streams manned. As the growing cycles change, the challenges increase. Someone who was able and interested in becoming a promoter um, to actually go out and take their, their agriculture knowledge that they're getting through NASFAM and so these people are all groundnut or soy farmers, maybe they farm both. And so they understand the value of those crops as commercial crops and as nutritious crops to consume in the home. Previously, our smallholder farmers, they used to produce on average about maybe 250, 400 um, kgs of groundnuts and even soya per hectare. This time around, we've got farmers who have managed to produce using the double row planting, go beyond 900 kgs per hectare. Increasingly, farmers recognize the, the benefit of, of planting improved seed. Most of our members they are able now to reserve some legume foodstuffs after harvest. Mm. Mm. 
Ndee basi bano apa ruwana kuri saizi wana wajeko saizi di guri tego wana so ruwana so zone so wata so kom. The project is really helping mitigating the malnourishment statuses from community point of view. I know one thing that the care groups do is um, put together a calendar of foods that are available throughout the year, you know, knowing that there are certain nutritious foods that are available throughout the lean season, for example, when the staple foods like maize may be scarce. We're trying to encourage families to save, you know, at least one or two bags of soy, if not more, and to, we're teaching them how to do, you know, just very basic household level processing of soy to be able to prepare nutritious meals. <laughs> Farmers can really reserve some for, for food and even buy their own seed because we cannot continue giving out seed throughout. Yeah. So there's sort of confusion um, to some extent uh, where farmers think everything, even if I'm not a member, I can benefit from some of these services. We still have roughly about 6 to 70 association field officers who have to be out there on a motorbike, which has to be fueled and so on for them to reach out in our extension system. That has been a challenge. Uh, that's why we've expanded the farmer to farmer and the uh, um, lead farmer concept. So it's a behavior change thing that has to be embedded throughout the process. I think it's you know uh, a good effort, and I'm glad we're doing it because we should be building uh, the capacity of local organizations to work across sectors. I think that's one of the things that's you know just fundamentally important. Much as we are promoting the production part, we've got our colleagues who are going towards the other end in terms of the nutrition part. I'm really excited about seeing whether the Feed the Future's integrated agriculture nutrition approach actually has that impact. Um, we hypothesize that it will. Programs like these are encouraging behavior changes that build pathways for sustainable futures for smallholder farmers. Visit agrilinks.org 